Sosie Milk, guess what? What? Today we're going to be talking about how Chinese people love to cook food at home. Okay, that sounds fascinating, but it's a little more complicated than that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, before we head off, guys, we're going to be talking about why Chinese people in general prefer to eat healthier and eat fresh and how different it is to actually, you know, overseas, because it is, it's, it's an interesting subject. It might not sound interesting, but just wait till we get into it. You're going to be fascinated. But, <laughs> it is, it is. Uh, before we hit the road, where are we? We're at a Chinese motorcycle dealership getting our registration sorted out. Before our big trip, so yeah, if you guys ever wanted to look inside a Chinese bike shop. Now you know. The biggest bike you can buy here is a GW 250cc. Yeah, everything else is 125. Anyway, we're gonna hit the road. They're not here to watch bikes. They're here to find out about eating healthy, home-cooked, fresh food. You need to sell this better, Winston, because it's a, it's a great topic. It's fantastic. It's fascinating. You will not believe the intricacies involved. <gasps> so, let's hit the road and talk about the most interesting topic we've talked to to date, which is Fresh vegetables and uh, stuff. So. I think you're titling this a little wrong. Well, what, what do you think the title should be? I don't know. I mean, I mean, it is a fascinating topic. You guys are really in, involved with the the process of video making right now because we don't even know what this is called. But we thought it was a worthy topic because it's something that's a little bit different, actually very different than back home. Incredibly different. Let's talk about your mother. Hey, Tell me about my your mother. favorite topic. <laughs> And more specifically, how does your um, family get fed? How does my family get fed? Yeah. Well, that doesn't involve my mother, but every day, this is this could be interesting. Every day, my wife will wake up. No, 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 no. I'm saying your family back home, not your oh, family. Oh, my family. Here. I'm sorry. Okay. How does your family get fed? Because I'm starting to get fed up. I got you. <laughs> um, now. Every week, my mother will go to the supermarket, or grocery store as we call it in America, and she'll go yeah. spend whatever amount of money to get what she needs for that week or maybe even the next week. And what will happen is if something's on sale or something's a good deal, then she'll put it in the pantry or in the freezer, and we still have food for later on, right? Okay, so basically what you're saying is maybe once, once a week, once every two weeks, she goes and fetches everything you need, like what kind of stuff? Bread, milk, bread, milk. Obviously, you need the fresh stuff for that week. That'll only last a week, like perishables, right? Okay. But then you got your canned foods, and then you got your frozen meats, and you got your beef, and your pork, and your fish, and chicken. And all that stuff can go into the freezer, because everything in the supermarket's already either frozen or chilled, right? Correct. So preserving meat through freezing, maybe some uh, frozen vegetables and things like that. It doesn't always have to be completely fresh. All right, so now you've said you go and you buy all this stuff, stick it in your house and then you use it up over the course of a, a week or two right i would ask you about south africa but i know you guys just go out with spears and hunt lions and stuff and yeah yeah that's only on occasion but it's exactly the same we have a supermarket we have frozen goods we have you know you can go and get your stuff right and you stock up basically and you get your bread and you get your whatever you need and then you you have a bread bin to keep your bread inside you know and you have right. a, a fridge to keep everything okay but now it might shock you to know that here in China, it's completely different. Yeah. Wow, really? Tell us more. Chinese people hate fridges. Okay. And I know there's going to be people in the comments like, how dare you say Chinese people hate fridges? We love fridges. You hate fridges. Your they, country they, hates fridges. <laughs> they hate fridges for, <laughs> for a different reason. Yes. Okay. Chinese people do not like to keep items for a long time. They yeah. think it's unhealthy. They don't like ice. Cold food, cold drinks, anything that's frozen, they believe is bad for your chi. Right. Okay, so what do they do? What does, uh, you know, your family here, your Chinese family do? Okay, well, every day, Vivi will wake up and go to the, first of all, the wet market. Now, okay. when she's at the wet market, she'll pick up everything that needs to be fresh. And that's, what I'm talking about is like meat. She will not buy frozen meat from the supermarket. By the she way, I'm on yeah. reserve tank, so when okay. we get a petrol station. we we'll get some petrol. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she'll buy fro uh, fresh meat. And a lot of the time, she'll pick out a chicken. Yeah. And this is crazy. This is crazy. But they'll take a live chicken. Yeah. And they jab it in the throat with a knife. Yeah. And then they throw it into this barrel, this rusty barrel, which is crazy looking. And it goes, 
front spins around like a whirlwind. Yeah, yeah, Comes yeah. out with not a feather on it. Bam, you got your fresh chicken with no guts in it. No idea what happens in there. Probably don't even want to see how it works. It's just like a washing machine type tumbler thing. It's like centrifugal force. But it's course. quick, dude. It's quick. Yeah. Anyway, so that chicken was alive five minutes before she starts cooking it at home. Right. Another thing. She's built a relationship with the people that sell the vegetables. So the, f the same farmers that actually go and grow the vegetables, their family members go to the wet market every day, fill yeah. up one of those tricycles, those electronic tricycles, from a little bit outside the city with a bunch of fresh vegetables, drop them off there, and she gets to know where they come from. She knows that they're gonna be good. They cut her a deal, throw her some free onions and carrots once in a while. Yep. And yeah, let's, uh, let's go fresh. straight, by the way. Straight, okay. And that's like that every single day. So. What I'm trying to say is it's different than what my mom does because every morning she's buying the fresh stuff. Now, Vivi every day also, weirdly enough, goes to the supermarket. Okay. And that's to buy things like milk and stuff that will go bad after a week. And that's the stuff that does go in the refrigerator. Yeah. What I find her not buying usually, for the most part, is stuff that she's going to stock away for a very long time. Okay. She might buy muesli or oatmeal or something sometimes, but for the most part, she's buying stuff that she needs to kind of re refresh every day, every other day. So she also goes to the supermarket every other day. Yeah. And that is, again, in order to buy fresh stuff. Now, also, I want to preface this by saying, whoa. Yeah, what are you um, doing? Relax. In the supermarkets. Yeah. They also sell live animals as well. You got frogs, turtles, and all that kind of stuff. So you can still buy that. But yeah. people prefer to go to the wet markets because they think it's like farm to the table type stuff. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of how things go. And I thought it was a little bit weird that even now, like my wife, she, she eats American food and all that kind of stuff sometimes, but she still wants to go to the markets and supermarkets every single day. Correct, yeah. Well, I mean, it's definitely a big part of the culture. You go out in the morning and you will always see old people, middle-aged old people, going to the wet markets and you will see, I call them vegetable couriers. Yeah, because, the red bag. Yeah, they always have a bag with vegetables hanging out and that's something you see every single day. Right. So, it doesn't matter what city you are in in China, in the morning you will see the old people going out and buying vegetables. Yeah. Now, I'd like to give some, some cultural context behind this, right? And it's all down to the family unit. Okay. So, as we know in China, when you get married, your parents-in-law on uh, the man's side usually, right? Am I right or wrong on that? Is it man's side or woman's side? I don't uh, know how they, how man's do they side. Do they, okay, man's side. Usually. Yeah, I mean, usually it, can, it could go both ways. Okay. But. but like the parents-in-law, they move in with the newlywed couple and yeah. live with them in their apartment. And again, this is changing. It's changing, but still, but majority by far and in large, it's still like that. Right. Um, so basically what will happen is they move in. Is it down here? Uh, it we can go this way. Can't be. That's let's new. Try. Let's just. Uh, let's go to the ghost town. Okay. All right. All righty. It's okay. the ghost town. We're in a ghost town, guys. It is the ghost town. If you haven't seen our um, ghost city episode, this it's is pretty it. freaking awesome. Go check it out. And they're still building. Th this anyway. is actually. I don't want to interrupt the topic. Yeah. But this is kind of like a little refresh. What was that? Six months ago. Uh, probably. Yeah. So let's let's have a look at it. Well, all, all these buildings over here are new. Um, yeah. They've broken land over there. Um, those farmhouses are still being built up so they can get more compensation. Right. Anyway, we're, we're getting off topic. We've got to get back on topic. People can go this watch it. This is ADV China, though. I just wanted yeah. to give an update. But if we see anything new, we'll point it out. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Anyway, um, so the parents-in-law move in, right? Yeah. And then their job is to look after the newborn baby that the yeah. couple must have. It's kind of a, an obligation. Get right. married young, have a kid young. Right. Um, which makes sense in, a, in an agricultural society and when survival is uh, of your society is a, a thing. So they have a kid and the grandparents, their sole job is to look after the child and to cook. Yep. And that's what they do. And uh, trust me, if you live here in China, that's all you do. Y you see the, the old people go out and buy the fresh stuff at the wet market. Mm -hmm. Then in the morning, like clockwork, you'll hear them in the apartments above and around you chopping. Chop, 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 chop. And then they fry it up and you can smell it, right? Because it's all concrete buildings, that shit resonates. And oh, if they yeah. start cooking at 6 a.m., it really pisses me yeah. off. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> it's so annoying because it's like, ta, 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 ta. Yeah. Anyway, like clockwork. And look, all these buildings are still unoccupied. Yeah, I actually wanted to point that out that... Okay, a lot of people in the comments are like, no, but people are going to move in. Just go, go back there later. And by accident, we did, and there's still no one here. Yeah, I mean, I look at that building, I see like three 
apartments that have. Uh, you, you know what you I know. do see though? You know what's new? What? A bunch of new buildings right across the way. Look at all this. Oh yeah, that's They're true. They're everywhere. They are. They are. Anyway, um, so they chop up and they cook and they've made breakfast um, for the family. So yeah. before the couple goes out to work, they eat breakfast at home. A lot of them. Right. Um, and then of course they have to cook lunch for the children if they're children right and yeah. they will go and actually uh, pick them up from school if they live close by and bring them home for lunch yeah and then of course they will be cooking dinner so the thing is and the big difference here is that they don't like to do grocery shopping they don't like to keep groceries they think will there's anything literally down there what's that think there's anything down there except for dead end no okay good. <laughs> um they will buy the the goods, the vegetables and the meat fresh for the day. So yes. they don't they don't won't keep it for like two days or three days. They buy it that morning. They use it that day. Yeah. Um, and that's the fascinating, amazing mm -hmm. thing about this topic is that. Well, I mean, I wanted to say you know yeah. some of the reasons why you pointed out. Yeah. But another thing is that if you have the elderly people cooking, yeah, they didn't have electricity a lot of times in the countryside so they didn't have things like refrigerators 60 50 60 year old people right sure so they i think it's what you're you've grown accustomed to uh, but, but with the younger yeah. generation that also you know i'm not going to say i think a lot of younger people like ice and like ice cream and cold things a yeah. lot of younger people do absolutely they're definitely less accustomed to following these blind traditions but the tradition of buying fresh produce every day to be able to cook still remains mm -hmm. And I think that has something to do with the fact that um, you'll hear this phrase, "出外面吃不好," right? Yeah. It means eating out outside or at restaurants other than your house is not good because you can't trust the food safety in a lot of these places. Correct. Maybe they use gutter oil, maybe too much oil. Maybe yeah. they add special ingredients to make stuff taste better that's not good for our health, right? Right. So that's why this kind of like, we need to cook fresh food, processed food is bad. There's a stigma that's attached to processed food and food that you eat outside at convenience, convenient restaurants and stuff because people have bitten too many, been bitten too many times yeah, because sure. of food safety and stuff like that. So I think it carried across all generations because of that reason. Uh, you also have to realize that it ties into the whole um, Chinese medicinal health ideas you know right and so for them it's 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 a must to eat food at home you know like you said that they can prepare themselves and they think it's more healthy right and one thing you you cannot escape is the fact that the older generation are imprinting all the new these ideas on the newer generation sure, sure. and in fact two generations ahead right because the grandparents are the ones bringing up the the young children so of course, the of course. young children are getting all these ideas about the way things should be from the grandparents so this isn't going to go away anytime soon right but as a counterpoint i mean there is a reason that why Dao Wai Mai, like these apps like Ulama and all this stuff are so popular is because a lot of people, especially migrant workers and stuff, yeah. that don't have this influence at home yeah. are definitely like, well, screw it. It's not that they stop believing in it. That's absolutely still there. That traditional Chinese belief that eating cold things is bad, like all that kind of stuff still per is pervasive. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is that apps that have really dirty, kind of like quick, convenient food are still super popular here because I'd say the younger generation stopped caring as much. Sure. They just, they're too busy. They're like, whatever. I'm just gonna eat junk food yeah let's call some uh, delivery of course yeah and on top of that it's all about the migrants right right so people have migrated to the city here they don't have their family with them right well they right. haven't brought them over yet so then of course the migrant people are gonna just eat out and to add to all of this I'd say that China is one of the cheapest places to eat out yes absolutely and, for us know, we love it you know recently um, my friend Gary who came here, he was talking about that all the time and he went back and told his wife, hey, I could eat out all the time there. I wouldn't have to, you know, cook at home because it's so cheap. And right. that's true. Right. Absolutely so. true. Yeah, I think my wife, you know, if she goes to the wet market, she can get pretty cheap stuff. Yeah. But like, I could get a full meal, you know, call it delivered directly to my door. Yeah. Super quickly, super conveniently. It's delicious. Yeah, maybe it's not super healthy, but I could get it for like half the price sometimes. Yeah, of course, of course. Which is kind of cool. Maybe this video, I think we figured it out, guys. This is the first interactive video titling experience. <laughs> maybe we could call this like, how do Chinese people eat? Uh, I think it should be something along the lines of how fascinating vegetable couriers are. I really think that's not going to get the views, bro. Probably not. I'm kind of um, hungry, though. What do you say we get some lunch? Yeah, let's go and sit down and we can make an Off the Bikes episode. And I think we should get Dongbei Thai. I want northern food, too. I yeah. absolutely want some northern food. Cool. Well, let's go figure it out. Okay. Should we sign off? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. I <laughs> guess we should.
So, Sea Milk, um, now that we've talked about the fascination of vegetables and stuff, yeah, uh, is there anything that you'd like to tell our subscribers before we sign off? Whether you like to eat fetid, rotten garbage that's been sitting in your bin for six months, or you like to eat delicious, fresh vegetables from your local Chinese wet market, I implore you to like, comment, and subscribe. And whether you actually know where that stuff comes from, because I just have to put this out there. A lot of the stuff you buy at the wet market, yes, it's fresh, but it's very often grown in like polluted soil and uh, the, the animals are being fed styrofoam and stuff, you know, it's, uh, it's just a fact of China, you know, you can never really trust it, unfortunately. You know what they say, you don't want to see how the sausages are made. Correct. Anyway, so whether or not you buy stuff in the wet market or you buy stuff in the supermarket, it's called super for a reason because it's awesome <laughs> and super. Um, and it's we so love convenient. you all the same. So, uh, oh yeah, and also wet markets are a great source of diseases like SARS. Um, I was going to say they're like better than going to the zoo, but... Well, yeah, anyway. <laughs> uh, we love you all the same, so until next time, guys, you know the drill. Stay awesome.